What's up, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out. It is uh, good to be back with you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Friday out there, getting ready for the weekend. Hey, one program note for the guys who like uh, uh, my content. Uh, I know there hasn't been too much fight content on this uh, this particular page recently. I'm going to change that. Um, but my uh, MMA show, back after the football season on BetQL, tapped out. New time every Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. It'll stream live on BetQL's Twitch network, twitch.tv slash BetQL. It'll stream live on the Odyssey app on the BetQL channel. So if you guys could check that on out, um, we got Thug Nasty, Bryce Mitchell. I'm actually going to post that uh, on this channel so you guys can check that out. It was one of my favorite MMA interviews of all time. That guy is a hoot. Uh, can't wait to watch him fight. So excited about that. But let's get into the heat game from last night. Was boots on the ground for that game last night at the arena. Boy, do they need a win. And uh, they needed it in the worst way, dude. It was uh, it was, it was, was definitely necessary. And, you know, they were going to have a tough situation even still last night because no point guard, essentially. Yeah, no Kyle Lowry. He was out. Spo said, uh, you know, they're trying to be responsible with the injuries. And then uh, they had Gabe Vincent out. Gabe Vincent's dealing with some stuff. So Drew Smith. Drew Smith got the start yesterday at point guard. He was in the starting lineup, and I thought it decent. You know, didn't uh, do anything to really botch it. It's not like he was playing uh, critical minutes. He was kind of like the the token star to try and set the rotation. And I like the fact that they're doing that. You know, Spo's famous for this, not really rocking the boat with a uh, with a starting lineup if he can't. So he could try and get some people in some standard roles together. And I think this was. You know, about as normal as a rotation as you could probably see for Miami outside of not having Gabe and not having uh, Kyle, obviously. But, you know, you had Deadman, Victor Oladipo, Max Struess coming off the bench. Those are always kind of going to be your top three guys to give Bama a spell. And then, you know, Struess being your shooter and Vic, uh, that's the role that they envisioned for him. So just coming out of the gate and getting a little bit of that, uh, I think, made a lot of sense for Miami. You know, you got a little bit of time from Haywood Highsmith yesterday. But all in all, the the, the starters who were there, really good performance by everybody. You know, this was a, uh, a very competitive game back and forth. There weren't uh, too many. This was one of those games for Miami. There weren't uh, too many big swings. They got off to a slow start in this game. Then had a good second quarter to, to bounce back. And, uh, you know, just a, just a solid game back and forth between these two teams. Clippers, of course, weren't playing Kawhi Leonard. Uh, they did play Paul George, and Paul George was really good in this game. And, uh, you know, just made tough bucket after tough bucket. Um, but Kawhi was, uh, was not there. But the rest of their team, you know, was an interesting match because they have a pretty good amount of size all over the place between Zubac and Marcus Morris and Nick Batum. And so... Uh, I did find it to be a, a bit of a fascinating matchup, but they didn't really get they, – they were a really good night shooting. Like, they got off to an incredible start. I think there was at one point everybody on their team had hit a three outside of Zubac. I think that everybody else uh, hit one from downtown, and uh, that was, you know, their big weapon. We had already seen that he get burned by this with the Pistons. and uh, But Miami was also having a, a, a really nice offensive night. And uh, that fourth quarter was the thing that really swung it for them. They, they really clamped down. I think the things that you love seeing in this one, though, you know, you got – this was this is like your typical formula game of, of where everything would look right for Miami. And it was Bam Adebayo really carrying the offensive load for the team for most of the game. He played all 12 minutes of the third quarter, had a 15-point third quarter, and uh, was just the, the, their, big, their big source there. And was still doing that in the fourth, but but it was really uh, Jimmy finding mismatches at the end. Uh, poor Luke Kennard, and he was uh, hitting those clutch shots. And it was a, you know they took it home. You know it got a little dicey there on an inbounds where for whatever reason Eric Spolstra didn't call timeout, and so uh, it, it probably got a little dicier than it needed to be there at the end. But they were able to uh, finally put the clamps on it and get a 115-110 win from uh from this one which was uh which was great you had uh you had uh Christian Pulisic was in the building last night he got himself a nice little heat mashup jersey so keep it going you the team USA men's US uh, uh national team has been in the uh the building the last couple times around uh you had your second game with Victor Oladipo and I thought that uh I thought Vic looked uh he's this is a couple games in a row I feel like his first spell 
he gets his, his two check-ins, usually one in the second quarter, one in the fourth. And I thought that his first one was a little bit shaky, but then like it felt like as the game was in and he kind of got to get a hold of it, I thought the second time that he came in, he looked a lot more comfortable. He was definitely in a better offensive rhythm and uh, started showing what he could do defensively as well. So the uh, the game th- this you know him getting this uh, this hold on this uh, guy this electrifier off the bench was uh, is exciting to see. It's exciting to see from Victor Oladipo, and I, I continue to be impressed physically with how he looks so far. So. That was also an interesting thing to see. But Spo was talking about this. You know, they're at a point right now. They're coming off two different difficult losses. And here was Eric Spolstra talking about, you know, them just basically having a good day of shoot around and really trying to put these days together. This was actually before the game and uh, what he had to say on a potential win streak. You stack day, good days after good days. You know, the, I, I thought we had a really good morning. Uh, that doesn't guarantee anything. You're just trying to stack habits, develop a... Uh, you know the right, um, uh, the right uh, sense of purpose. You know together, and, and uh, you just keep on building uh, from there. Um, you now there's been, there, despite what the last uh, the two games were, there were a lot of good things that were happening from the three weeks before that, and so we just have to get to that and, and do it way more consistently. We understand what wins, but I think it's also just as important to understand what gets you beat in this league and. And uh, there's some telling things in, in the last two games that uh, those are things that have gotten us beat this year. And it was good to see that they were able actually to, to, to kind of put this one and, and, and be the team that I think, you know, you had a team coming off a of back-to-back and, you know, you were in that tough scenario the last game around where you were in the second half of back-to-back. Now you're taking on a terrible team as opposed to a much more talented team in the Clippers. But, you know, it, it was good to see them kind of just bring it home. And 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 do so. I, I just like the fact. I thought this was one of just the better games we've seen all season, and we haven't got a ton because Jimmy's missed a lot of time. But I thought Bam and Jimmy, their chemistry together was about as good as I've seen it uh, all season. They were really looking for each other. They were trying to set each other up. Uh, a lot of that was was uh, guys trying to set up Bam. And the one thing I, I will say about Bam that I really love seeing is I love the. The, the the silky smooth Jay that he has brought to the table. But I think that we have seen a very, very uh, paint-oriented Bam. Like, this guy is really trying to get to his sweet spots in the paint. He had this one beautiful move uh, in the third quarter. Brandon Boston. It was right after Brandon Boston dunked right on Tyler Hero's face. And Bam, like, put this beautiful spin move on it. They, like, they brought the double team over. Then they uh, then it got left, so he was left one-on-one with Brandon uh, Boston. Did this beautiful spin move into a reverse layout. It was really, really pretty. I mean, like, that I think has been the more impressive thing, more so than all this talk that we had about the three-pointers. We're talking about offensive game and even just Bam assertiveness. His confidence in just, I guess, his bag is seems like it's just going through the roof. It's been a really impressive thing to see. Here was him after the game. It feels great when you, you know, we all put in that hard work for 48 minutes to get a win. Um <clears throat> So, you know, for for us, a win is a win. No matter who's the who's the most assertive, uh, you know, it's me tonight. You know, next game it might be Jimmy, might be Tyler, but you know, at the end of the day, we care about wins. So Miami gets himself a win. I, look, I, I think Tyler Hero said it best. This isn't one that they're trying to celebrate too much. They're just trying to stay even keeled. So how has it been uh, riding the team by uh, the emotional wave? You guys feel like you're kind of getting it back. Have a couple tough losses. Was it? Was there a lot of uh, needing to kind of keep it even keel? Yeah. Last few days? Uh, yeah. Which not try to get too high, not get too low. Um, you know, just a week ago before those two losses, we felt great. You know, after those, you know, Boston and you know that Atlanta game on the road, and then you take two tough L's, and you feel a little different about yourselves, but you don't want to get, like I said, don't want to get too high, too low, and you know we didn't get. We're not too excited about this win. Obviously, it's good to get a win, but you know we got to continue to get better and stack good days on top of good days. One last note for this game, and that was uh, Eric Spolstra. <laughs> this was my favorite part. This was my favorite part of the post game yesterday. Uh, I don't know who the reporter was, but props to him. He first of all was fantastically dressed, but he, uh, you know, look, Spo doesn't get asked a lot about this. Quite frankly, like he is, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like. People try and get spo with the national media questions and 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 the noise out there, and and this market doesn't really t- typically. So, you know, you have a an unorthodox 
question coming in from a guy who's not there normally, and I liked it. This was uh, so we we talked about this. The Charles Barkley said uh, that the Heat should break it up. They should start over. <laughs> and uh, Eric Spolstra was asked about this, and uh, this was his response. Coach Charles Barkley said yesterday that the Heat should break up the the team and start over. You obviously haven't paid attention to to my stuff. Um, who cares? I feel like there's two like two things come to mind immediately. First of all, is who cares? There's immediately Mike Francesa reacting to Stanley's death. We go, oh, who cares? And then there's that uh, that meme of. I don't even know what the response was, but that meme of uh, Mike Tomlin where he goes, "We do not care." That was like my immediate uh, uh, immediate reaction when I when I heard that from Eric Spolstra. But of course he doesn't care. Look, they uh, there's a lot of time left in this season. There is. I haven't. I was not happy these last couple of games. I'm not going to mince words. Uh, you guys have seen the reactions that I've had to it. I was I was pissed. I was super pissed after the Memphis loss. Uh, I was very. I was like sh- bewildered by the Pistons loss and I was happy that I had like a day to decompress from it but I was bewildered by it but seeing today uh you know Jimmy and Bam work the way that they did those guys are two of the best in the league best the two of the best two-way guys in the league and yeah maybe you know Tatum and Brown are playing at a at a supreme level right now but look that chase is that chase like you know they're they're off and running right now I, I think the heat you can't worry about trying to get back to where you were last year was which is the one seed in this regular season like this is a super compressed east right now especially four through the rest basically to the tankers um you know just like like Spo said you, you stack the good days like 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 Tyler said you stack the good days the good days the good games just so they can get some consistency going and I really still feel like the capability of this team is to get a run, but I can't sit here and say I have a lot of faith in it until I see it. I could talk about it until I'm blue in the face. They could talk about it until they're blue in the face. But until we see it, it's getting exhausting talking about it because we know the talent on this team is, is capable and has shown better, especially against the better clubs. I think the thing that's frustrating is the teams that we really feel they should beat, it, it, the lapses are just mentally uh are just mentally ex- exhausting to see all this so um you know they got uh they got the spurs who again after a kind of a surprising start have crashed back uh to where most people thought they would be which was uh, not a very good basketball team and they got them on saturday night and that's a game they should win dude that's a seven win team you got to go take care of that team you got to go take care of business against them you know this is this is really a part of your schedule where if you truly believe you could stack these days together, this is a really great time to do it. And it's not saying like the heat, it's not, you know, good teams can fat, should fatten up on the teams that they're a lot better than. And for Miami, it feels like we only get their best when somebody tries to bring the best out of them. And when they don't, it's kind of like laissez-faire, blah, blah, blah. So um, hopefully they can uh, do what they were saying, which is, you know, keep this going throughout and they don't come out fat like uh, like fat cats on Saturday. <laughs>